Roberta, you want to kick that off? Kick this off for us? <laughs> sure, I'm happy to do that. I'm so glad that we're talking about this very timely and topical subject. And we've all been touched by it in some way, whether it's long distance grief from just hearing about other people or very close to home or within ourselves. So there are some things that, that we need to know about this because suicide, of course, is a very final solution to a dark and often temporary situation that can be resolved. And it's so important for us to be the people who can be the wings on the side that say this can be resolved without any self-blame, without any self-shaming, <clears throat> which is what the person Don't start, already come here. is already experiencing. So just, just maybe start off with a few things that could be happening that we need to be aware of. I think we're all aware that people would be depressed. And that, of course, is not a situation that cannot be helped. It can be. But if you're in the deep, dark spaces of that, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to see the light. And that's where each of us can help. Also, someone may be going through a psychotic situation where there's a break in reality, where they really don't understand what the results of their behaviors or their thoughts are. Sometimes people do this on impulse. This is why we have to be with them, because then we can ask a question. We can we can help them see options <clears throat> many times. I mean, that's why we have something called Suicide Watch. Obviously, it's a cry for help in many situations. Someone is not happy. They think that this will, in fact, draw attention to them. And <clears throat> also, there are other aspects. Sometimes people simply want to take control of their destiny. Perhaps they know something we don't know. Perhaps they have a diagnosis that they don't care to live with. We can't always say that this is a terrible thing. It is a choice, and we have to be aware that it is a choice. And <clears throat> sometimes, especially with young people, it's a mistake. It's not an intentional thing. Somebody with a substance abuse issue may not recognize that what they're about to do to make themselves feel better is full of fentanyl. So there are many things that we look at when people die by suicide, and it's important for us to come from a non-judgmental place, from a place of love and an extension of, I'm with you, I'll be present with you, and I can help. And I think from a spiritual place, we can be non-judgmental. We can say, I, I can share with you that I will walk with you and I will talk with you, and let's see what's possible, because there are many, many, many options. So maybe that's a great place to kick it off, Swami. Thank you so much, you. Roberta, Dr. Shaler. And we have Ron here also, and if Ron, if you can turn your camera on, that would be awesome, Ron Stark. Okay, well, do we see him yet? No. no. So Ron, if there's uh, something you'd like to share <clears throat> about uh, preventing uh, suicide from the veteran's point of view? Hello, Ron? Did we lose him? They say he says he's here with us, but... Um, no, it's just going back to audio only. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so uh, how? Uh, what would you like to share? What can help uh, folks, particularly from a veteran's uh, families, veterans and their families? Well, one of the things, uh, you know, I have to, I, I appreciate the, the previous uh, speaker talking about the spiritual problem uh, and, and the spiritual connection. Uh, moving to zero started with a, uh, a deep, dark spiritual need, um, looking at suicide and thinking about it daily and from, uh, from, a, from an actual, I guess, a, a peer of depression. So from my own shared experience, it came out of that. And it was no conse it was no coincidence, I believe. It started out as moving 22 to zero. And then I realized along the way, uh, what happens if it's 20, then zero? What happens if it goes up to 30? 
uh, a day. As, as right now, we, we don't know exactly what it is, but what I, what I found is, is that zero is the target. And if you go to the website, you'll see a compass rose, which is meaningful to just about anyone in any situation that zero is true north and really pointing people to true north and understanding that zero is the target. Anything off target is anything that's not zero is off target. So, um, you know, I, I, I did a lot of reading around that and, and realized that, that Christ uh, was tempted with, with ending his life on a high pinnacle by, by the devil. And, uh, and he did not succumb to that temptation. And and that 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 I didn't have to succumb to that temptation either. Uh, the next thing was is it was no coincidence that the number was around 22 because when we look at Psalms 22, we see that that is a picture of Christ on the cross, and and understanding that it's okay for me to live and give my life for others, but not for me to take my own life. And so then I developed this personal ethos. Uh, which I now call the new ethos, and you can see that at the website also. And it, it's simply this. Uh, I may die at the hand of another, but lest be to save another, I shall not die by my own hand. And that's on the mantle at my house. Uh, it's it's in, my, in my briefcase as I'm walking around, and I'm constantly doing that. And I realize, again, that this is an ethos that could be put in place for veterans at the very earliest days of their military experience. So we teach ethos and, and sayings and, 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 uh, and along the way through the military career uh, that keep us alive, but what about something that will keep us alive after the career and understanding that, that, um, that this, is, this may be something that happens after the career in the military. And so to have that ethos deeply embedded as a guide or a reset button to always default back on that, okay, uh, it's tough, it's dark, it's a dreary cave, but, but I may live long enough to save someone else. And that's, mm. that's really the goal uh, of moving to zero. Mm. Thank you, Ron. And Ron, I didn't introduce him. As the, I believe he's the president of the San Diego Veterans Coalition. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And then uh, uh, of San, Di in the San Diego Veterans Coalition, about 150 organizations that are serving veterans and families uh, across San Diego County. And then also CEO and, and founder of Moving to Zero. All right. Folks who are listening, we have a lot of listeners. Ask your questions, share your stories, share your comments. It's what the, this is for to help all of you out there. Anybody, feel free to just step in and share anything. Daniel, maybe. Oh, wow. Um, you know, uh, um, this whole thing kind of came together when I um, put out a video on my feelings about um, the two celebrities that had um, died recently. And it really hit home for me because um, I've struggled with uh, suicide, suicidal tendencies. I actually have tried to commit suicide more than once in my 20s and 30s. And, um, you know, I, I understand that desperation. And I, and I guess that that video was just when you're a, per, a personality, people think you don't have problems. They, they think that, I mean, people do see me happy all the time. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just what I put out. I'm happy all the time. But they don't know when the camera's off that that's not always how I feel. I even know how to put on a happy face. Uh, and then, you know, turn off the, the, the video and, and then deal with whatever uh, things I need to deal with. And, and I, I think that if there's anything that I can say, um, I, I, uh, I understand that depth of desperation. I understand that, that need for for reaching out and not being able to do it, like my hands are tied. Um, and, and my hope was that by having this panel that we would give people six, seven people they could reach out to. And, and life is not perfect. Just like the ocean has waves, life has problems. And um, 
if you're currently suffering from depression or anxiety or being uh, um, separated or whatever it is that you may be going through, just know that I know many of us here have experienced some form or another of um, friends or family or even ourselves going through these kinds of tendencies and events and we love you. We love you and, and um, I'm just really glad that those dark days are gone from me, but that doesn't mean I don't feel depressed. It just means I have tools today and there's some wonderful tools that they've presented already that, you know, go to their websites and check them out and, and, um, and we're here for you. I mean, I, I mean, my heart just goes out to everyone because I get it. I get it at a deep level. I get it. And I also get that life is beautiful. I mean, I never thought I would live out of my twenties. I really, I didn't, I remember overdosing on drugs and waking up in the hospital and going, shit, I can't even do that right. <laughs> you know, and you know, I mean, it was really horrible. But but I think the universe had a different plan for me, and thank thank goodness, you know, as I reached my my fifty fifth birthday, I, I'm just in, in absolute gratitude that I didn't leave this earth. And so, if you're out there and you're hurting and you you need somebody, I know it's hard to say go reach out for someone, but just do. I know I called the suicide hotline a couple of times, hiring, hiring a kite. Uh, and you know what? I listened to them. I did. I listened because they told me I was brilliant. I don't know if they were reading a script or not, but, <laughs> 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 but, but it worked. It worked. Um, you know, there's, there's an old saying I used to see a sign in Dallas where I grew up that said, if you don't get help here, get help somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I know people are out there and I know it seems like people don't love you, but they do. And I know a panel right here that yes. unconditionally loves you no matter what. And so just just keep that in mind. And um, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm here for you. Uh, you can send me a note. You can reach out to me and and I'm happy to talk to you. Um, I think one of the things that people get burdened with is, well, they're too busy. Yeah. Well, it may seem that way. Uh, but you never know until you reach out. So thank you for giving me this opportunity, Swami. Hey, I, yeah. This, oh, this go ahead. Ron, like and I just want to, I got to chime in there because that is exactly right. That unconditional love and depression is a very dark cave. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been able to learn over the, over, I mean, the scariest day of my life, 20 years in the military, the scariest day of my life was the first day sitting in the parking lot, getting ready to go into a therapy session trying going to share some of the darkest parts of my soul i mean i was weeping and sweating and ready to bolt finally went in and over the years now uh, and it's been quite a few years i i have really learned that the symptoms of depression if i really pay attention to them quickly and constantly that they're almost like a protective factor that are alerting me that there's danger ahead yeah. Beware. Go yeah. away. Go find help. Get moving. Go do something. And 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 yeah. And if you you know, and and you're right. Uh, I mean, I don't know that I have a clinical approach to suicide when somebody reaches out to me because I, I, I typically someone will. I, I got one from a caller uh, from Mexico. Uh, he he just reached out to me and I said. Uh, so I called him up. I said I sent a Facebook thing. Say you are my number one priority. Everything in my world is second to you. Just call me, mm -hmm. and and all of a sudden realizing that there's somebody that cares and that will take the time and put their life and everything else on hold for them, and then they call and I'm like, okay, so I hear you know you say you you're thinking about suicide. I just go right to the nut, you know, and and start wrenching on that thing. And they say, yeah, I really am. It's, I'm really dark and the demons are coming in. I says, well, l let me ask you this. I says, how are you, how are you planning to do it? And, and they'll tell me, one, one, one veteran told me, he said, well, I want to take a gun and blow my brains out. I said, do you have a gun? And he says, he says what business is, that of your, is it of yours? And I said to him, I said, you know, I said, if you're going to, if you're going to take your life on the phone with me, uh, I need to be able to prepare for that because I'm going to have to live with that the rest of my life. And, and then all of a sudden they turn and they'll say, no, I wouldn't do that to you. So you've got mm -hmm. someone in the depths of depression mm -hmm. on the edge of suicide thinking about another human, and that's the tipping point right mm -hmm. there. 
And what what ends up happening now is they keep communicating with me, and they'll send me a message. Hey, and if they don't reach out in a few days, I say, hey, are you still alive? Just checking in on you. And they'll say, yeah, I am. And I've got veterans now doing that for other veterans, having veterans checking in with them because you are the trusted source that they reach out to you so you have the lifeline that, that can bring somebody into the ship and get out of those drowning waters. <clears throat> Love that. Yeah. Well, I'd like to, I'd just like to kick in. Um, Daniel, first of all, when I saw your Facebook Live, I want to thank you for your transparency and your vulnerability and being so real. You touched my heart in such an amazing way. And you actually brought things up for me because I had someone very close to me try to commit suicide. I tried one time myself because I was in a very abusive, toxic relationship. I was in the depths of despair, so I understand that. And I, you know, I go back to that space and we all, we there's such a stigma around it. You know, it's like there's something wrong with me, but there's nothing wrong with any of you. You're human, we all have human moments. There's no shame. There's a society out there that's telling us, you know, that we have to achieve and be successful and all these things have to happen and we feel so less than, you know, we feel so small, like we're not accomplishing that and we're not, we don't, we, we're not significant, but you matter. Every single person on this planet matters, every single one. And I think the biggest lesson for me was that when those things were happening to me, I was being judged by people at my church. I was being, you know, uh, mm. moved away. People didn't know what to say, so they moved away from me and I was alone. I was very much alone. It was so dark. And what I really realized was when the person close to me, I was very unconscious back then because I was being abused myself. But what really came home for me today, the message I want to, um, first of all, yes, all of you out there are loved. You are so loved. And reach out, surrender, and allow yourself to be held by people who love you and see you and want to be there for you. That's a huge message. But also, for those of you who are, are reaching out and helping and they're there to serve other people who are going through this experience, the biggest thing that I can feel into is that I wasn't present back then. And several of you have brought it up. You know, so many of us, again, I was talking to Yvonne about this when we first came on, you know, we don't know what to say, we don't know what to do, we're so uncomfortable, so we just move away from people. We, we walk away not because we don't care, we just don't know what to do. And the thing is, is that we all feel that. And Yvonne said something I loved, it was so significant. She said, you know, just say, I'm uncomfortable, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do, but I'm here for you. Be present. More than anything else, people need your presence. They need you to be with them fully, listen to them. And, you know, obviously, if you're in a toxic situation, please get help to leave that situation. It's not serving you or anybody else. But the biggest thing, again, if somebody would have shown up present for me, and thank God that the divine had other plans for me as well, because I struggle with depression. It's a family history. Um, I may not be here. So really reach out, be present to people, be available, like Ron said, show up, check in, don't just make it a one-time thing, be committed to another human's life and, you know, uh, and, and listen. And that's one of the biggest things that I want to share with you guys. But again, I do want to express that you matter and you deserve love and you deserve to be held and we all have down moments. So when somebody reaches out or you reach out, just reach out to anybody reach out don't be ashamed of it you deserve it we love you so much and uh and we're all here for you we really are like daniel said reach out to any of us truly so, thank well you. i'm just i'm just uh happy that both of you daniel and lisa have your light here because now i have a reason to have sunglasses <laughs> so <laughs> keep bringing that robert light Clancy. to the world thank you robert and mine is you know I've, I've spoken for the american foundation for suicide prevention at two of their walks and i was also a keynote speaker and they put up these quilts of everyone who was lost to suicide and what struck me as i walked past these quilts and the people holding pictures or having the picture of their loved one on their shirt was how incredibly beautiful all these people were mm -hmm. and are. And I thought, how did they extinguish this beautiful light and not see what they have in them? So mine is to, to look at that darkness and, and how to shed light. And when you add light together, it gets brighter. If you add darkness together, nothing changes. The only thing that changes darkness is light and it defeats it. So having a simple smile, something to share, something to have gratitude for. And the other is, you know, Daniel, you pointed out, 
when you're on that slippery slope and you're going in that reverse climb, you know, and I've done this. I've walked into the Grand Canyon and I did not have enough supplies on me. I got to this sign, you know, midway through thinking I'm fine. I'm walking into a desert. I'm getting dehydrated. I don't even realize it. And this sign came up and said, if you choose to pass this sign and you don't have four liters of water on your person, we will not be able to rescue you or recover your body. <laughs> the U.S. Park and Rec Service and somebody scratched a smiley <laughs> face and said, have a nice day. And I thought, you know, as I passed this sign without enough supplies, uh, I went another 45 minutes and then I decided to turn around. And, oh my God, it was like eight hours of climbing stairs to get out of there. And as I got out of there, I thought about all the people who had died on that trail. There were people that literally dehydrated to death on the trail mm -hmm. who didn't ask for help and say, I was stupid, I didn't bring enough water. Or the people that passed them and said, hey, you're not looking that good. So Lisa, you brought up the point when you reach out. And I'm a martial artist, so I go in, you know, we, we have to approach pain because that's the way that you go through it. And when somebody is in pain next to you, we retract. That's the human nature. That's your body. It says get away from the pain. But that's the exact opposite you need to do to get rid of the pain is to go through it and into it. And sometimes it's just reaching out with that simple smile, a gesture, a kind word can change someone's mind and save their life. And it's worth saving. All of your lives are out there and that's the beauty of this and yeah we've all struggled with that I have a great friend of mine this um, beautiful light and I've known her since she was born she was a valedictorian of her, of her school she went on to become you know got a hundred on the law exam a hundred this is how brilliant she is <laughs> never heard her say a negative word about anyone and she suffered from postpartum psychosis not depression psychosis and when your brain is broken there is nothing to do there I mean how do you fix that and being there for that person and trying to get them help so my friend uh, his you know her her brother actually got laws changed and his wife so that you can reach out so there's things you can do to advocate and be there for others and I know if she was at risk we all are we all are. And that's the important point and the takeaway from that. So go out, reach that hand out, and ask for help if you're dehydrating on that trail because there's an abundance of love and we're standing in the ocean all the time. You just need to dip your toes in and take that swim. So thank you for all of your light in, in here today. I just want to add something to the lovely metaphors that you put in there, Robert. I think one of the things we can hold in our in our mind is to be a firefighter. That's the person who runs toward the building instead of away from it. Right. And we need to have our own health in order in order to do that. We need to be centered and we need to take care of ourselves so that we have that to give. You can't give a gift you don't have. So let's all keep ourselves in great shape and deal with the same things that we're speaking of on a day-to-day -day basis. Ask for help. Do all of those things to maintain our emotional and mental health as well. Yes. Thank you, Roberta. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, this Ron again, you know, a military ethos for veterans. You know, I find it's uh, sometimes better to just be, you know, kind of raw and vulgar because military service and 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 some of its treacheries can be raw and vulgar uh and you're right you you know there there we would take one for a friend and we will run into danger and run toward danger for a friend uh but people tend to pull pull back when they talk about suicide and we have another ethos is no one's left behind and so individually i'm a someone and i can't leave me behind either so I have to, you know, I have to constantly be vigilant around that. I uh, like what you said a, a little bit earlier about, you know, a funny guy. I mean, I'm usually pretty happy out in, in public because some of that's just, um, you know, you know, some of that is just to keep me in motion. And and with depression, you know, pe sometimes people get this misconception that the opposite of the uh, symptoms of depression is happiness and joy. Uh, the, 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 for me, 
the opposite of depression is moving. Uh, the op- I mean, getting just getting because depression is so confining. It's just there's this this dark restrictive place, and it gets so confining. And any motion uh, is good motion. Uh, you know, respiratory exchange, breathing deeply, uh, a pulse, brain waves. All those are movements. Music uh, is described in movements. Uh, just getting out for a walk, it, mm-hmm. you know, it, taking a walk outside is so counter uh, symptomatic from the symptoms of depression. It's just getting in motion, and and if you don't know what to do with a friend that that's that's uh, contemplating suicide, just say I'm coming over. We're going to go for a walk because they need to get out of that room and they need to get outside. They need to go with someone. And get in motion. Um, there's there is a proverb that says a live dog is better than a dead lion. It doesn't matter how strong you are. If you're dead, you got no strength. But if you're alive, you can still make it through. You know that 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 reminds me of um, so, you know over the over the years I've developed tools for myself to stay mm-hmm. present because I realize that any any moment that I get into anxiety or I get into depression. It's because I've left the present moment. I've, I've gotten very concerned about things I do not control. And so I want to give you just three things to think about. If you're out there right now and, and you feel lost or you feel misdirected or you feel depressed or you feel anxiety, ask yourself th- these three questions. This is what I do for myself. Where are my thoughts right now? Are they in the future, present, or past? If they're not in the present and I'm in the future and the past, therein lies my, my problem. And, and I realize, wait a minute. I'm concerned about whether I can pay my bills or Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about how someone feels about me. And neither one of those things I have any control over. So I get very centered. The next thing I ask myself is, are these thoughts I'm having, are they real? And have they ever been real? And I have to ask myself that because sometimes I can get off on tangents. Goodness, I don't even know where they come from. And and, (laughs) and I get caught up in my thoughts and I realize that, that, that for me, Many of the things, well, 85% of the thoughts we worry about never come to pass. So if that's true, I'm spending 15%. Uh, I'm not spending my time in the 15%, right? So I, I ask myself, are these real? Because it is hard when you get inside your, your mind and you get trapped in that space. And so if I'm going to be in that space and I'm going to be feeling the way that I do in that moment, I might as well ask if I'm in that space, where are these thoughts coming from? And are they real? And then the last thing was what um, Ron was talking about is is move, you know, get out and do something, uh, break the energy that you're sitting mm-hmm. in. So I know that I need to get out and take that walk or I need to take the thank goodness I have dogs because they have to go out <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and they get me outside. And, and these sound simple, mm-hmm. but they save my life every day. Yeah. Right. It, 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 it gets me centered to stay focused on on the solution. And, and I want to share this little story because if you're helping somebody, sometimes just bringing things back to the present helps someone get out of wherever it is that they disappeared to. Yes. And those, de- those depths of depression are dark, dark, deep wells. And I was, there was this one guy that I called. He, he set up an appointment with me, and he said to me uh, when I called him, he says, well, you said to call, so I did. And he says, I'm, I'm in Chicago. I'm at the lake. I'm going to end my life by suicide. And I said, Wow. I said, well, thank you for calling. Um, and I said, so tell me what's going on. And, and you know, most, most people aren't going to tell you what's going on. They're, they're, they're inside. And so I just kept asking them. And I do use a lot of humor. And I'm, I don't make fun of anybody. I'm not making fun of the situation. But humor, if you get someone laughing, it, it's, it does something. It changes their physiology. It changes where their, their state is. And I said, so really, I mean, if, if this is what you're going to do, you know, just tell me w- what's going on. So he finally broke down. He told me and he says he he was perplexed about not being able to pay his bills. Oh, I get it. I get it. It may seem like that's real. I said, well, what's going on? He goes, they won't quit calling. I said, who's calling? Well, the debt collectors, they're calling every single day. And and it's just driving me crazy. I can't do it anymore. I can't pay him. I said, what bill? He says, the light bill. I said, the light bill. Well, how much is it? He said, thirty five dollars. And I said, you want to end your life for $35? And I said, hey, I got an idea. And he says, what? Why don't you unplug the phone? 
He says, I never thought of that. I said, I'll plug the phone. They won't call anymore. I promise you, it won't work. So he starts laughing, right? I said, I mean, really? 35 bucks? I said, let me tell you something else. I never saw a company go out of business because you didn't pay them $35. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to go to a collector. The collector's going to send it to another collector. And if you don't have a phone, they're never going to call you. I'm not saying don't pay your bills, but damn it, don't end your life over this. Yes. It doesn't yes. make any sense. And, and he started laughing. And at the end of the call, he really realized in that situation, I'm saying that this works for, but sometimes they just need to know somebody cares. And for me, humor is a way I usually try to get people out of those spaces. Um, not that it's funny, not that it's um, anything to laugh at, but sometimes co true compassion is not getting caught up in someone's anguish. True compassion is being able to be with them with it with, without taking that on and giving them the one thing. And I'm clear that this is the reason why people choose that route. They want love. Yes. They want love and they have no freaking idea how to get love. Yeah. And we have to be able to be that person. So if you're the person that's on the other side, ask yourself those questions. And if you're the person on the other side helping, remember to have compassion by just giving them love. Sometimes just being there, right, Roberta? I mean, you said something, just being there is enough. And I know for me, um, I didn't have people that came for me. Nobody was ever there. I'm just really blessed that I didn't go anywhere. You know, I was alone. Uh, and that's why it's important. I think Ron was saying is you got to take the initiative and go get them. If you really care, then that's the kind of caring we need to have for each other. We can't keep texting. I was texting my friend who hung herself last year. And I never heard back. And I thought, well, it's life, right? Today we text, we don't text. No, that was the last text that I got. And I didn't even know that it had happened until I was in the grocery store. And someone said, hey, did you know that so-and-so um, died? And I said, what? And I said, when? And I went back to my text and it was that day, last text that I sent to her. And we can't be that damn busy. We have to stop if we care. And I know we all live in a very busy <laughs> world where we're te texting and stuff, but you know, love somebody enough to put the phone down. Love somebody enough to get up and go to them. Love somebody yes. enough to go give them a hug. Personal love connection. Enough, love yes. somebody enough yes. to connect with them. Go yes. take them out. Yeah. And you know what? That may be enough. So I'm, I'll get off my soapbox. I'm sorry. I no, just, love that. It, Mindset shifts, ways, you know, personal connection. There's, yes. There's ways to help this thing. It doesn't yes. have to be. And we and this is why we're here today, folks. We want to get the stigma away. Yeah. It's not that they committed suicide. They died by suicide. It's, it's, it's Robert said it's not a crime that right. they did that. And we got to quit calling in that. This is death by suicide. You don't say someone committed cancer. You don't say someone committed a car accident. No. They died by car accident. They died of cancer. And we give, give them all the empathy and sympathy in the world. We need to do the same yes. thing for these people that are suffering. Because yes. for them, they're still here. Yes. And we have one shot at it. Thank you, Daniel. Yes. Yvonne, you have some uh, solutions that you practice with clients. What are they? Well, I'll just ask a question first, and I'll ask. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. This is so awkward and uncomfortable. Just raise your hand if you've ever said these things or felt this way when someone was grieving, facing one of life's challenges or in a crisis. And you know, when someone is grieving, and I talk about grief is divorce, diagnosis, job loss, mental health issue, yes, facing end of life. For some people, at the end of a relationship, they just cannot bear the pain and they feel like their life is not worth living. And I believe that our job, we are very compassionate people, but when we don't know what to do, we don't know what to say, we avoid. Yes. And I feel like the solution is when we don't know what to do and we don't know what to say, there are three words, just show up. Yes. Just show up. And of course, if you can just show up in person, wonderful. But if you can't, hug, text, email, call, sit silently, be willing to say, I don't know what to do, but I'm here. Be willing to sit in the mud with someone and the discomfort not knowing how to fix it. It's always better to do or say something than to do or say nothing. Mm -hmm. And if, if yes. the problem is greater than that, reach out for help. Yes. I have been, a, I was a nurse for 27 years. My husband is a paramedic. And in situations where I had a friend who was saying, I'm going to end my life, I called mental health and the suicide, and I said, help, I need help. My friend is saying this, what do I do? 
when my son went down um, a dangerous road of addiction and I thought that someday I would get that call. I called Addiction Outreach and I said, oh, is that for me? I said, <laughs> help me, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say, my son is going down this path, help me please. I am a nurse and I'm a professional and you know what, I was okay to allow my humanness mm -hmm. and to be a hot mess and to not apologize and these things happen to nice families. I have a nice family and my son went down this messy road and I don't apologize for that. I It was hard, it was heart-wrenching and I didn't think I would survive it. So I learned three things that we need to show up for ourselves first because the wonderful news for anyone is that we, we are responsible for our own happiness but we can reach yes. out to yes. others also. There's always someone out there that cares. Yes. But we have value and you matter. We matter, as Lisa said, because we exist. Not because we have a PhD, not because we have this wonderful job, this wonderful spouse, simply because we exist. We are all a gift to the world, no matter what ability, disability, whatever we have. And how wonderful to take our messy experience of life and our disastrous selves. People say, oh, you're so lucky. I'm not lucky. I worked hard and I still <laughs> fall down and I still yeah. things happen in my life and I'm a mess and I'm okay with that. And guess what? Anybody out there, if you see other people and are envious of their lives, I promise you, you don't know what's going on in yes. behind closed doors and in their lives. They mm -hmm. may, the, the picture may look perfect. We all have our stories. So, you know, as we, as I heard everybody, and I have started this global movement, the I Just Showed Up movement, mm. and it has a little card with it, and it says, <laughs> Swami has a first thing. Swami. The first thing it says is where this is a reminder to show up for yourself first, and the second thing is where, it be, because I want you to just show up, or you did, because you can make a difference with the smallest gesture. And if somebody just showed up for you, give them a brace to say thank you. Mm. And anybody that's listening today, if you would like to send me a private message, I would be happy to send mm. you a bracelet. Beautiful. Show up for yourself first, and we are all each other's responsibility. If you see something, do or say something, and just show up. Thank you, Yvonne. Mm. I think an important part of what you said, Yvonne, is that many of us don't realize and recognize at dark times that we have the right to take up space and draw breath. Yes. Yes. And it's so important for us to help someone understand that. And for what Daniel was saying, if you could get someone to speak it, then they hear it from the outside of themselves and that thirty five dollars all of a sudden made sense yes but while it was ruminating and running around inside ain't it awful i can't do this i'm a terrible mm -hmm. person because i don't have thirty five dollars it just wasn't a downward spiral but when you can help someone give voice to what's going on then it gets outside themselves. They can laugh at the $35, and maybe if they're not ready to laugh, they can see the sense that maybe $35 is not a good price tag for a life. So it's important for us all to allow ourselves to have, there are seven inalienable rights that we have, and the most basic is that we deserve to take up space and draw breath. We have the right to exist. And if anybody is feeling that they don't, remind yourself that, do you know how that how unlikely it was that you got into this world? Just think of one egg and a hundred million sperm, and you're it. So you're here. I just see all this light being shed on this conversation because each of these are big truths. You know, they're huge yes. truths to change perception and mindset so that people get the truth of what's really going on. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much. That's just ugh, there's so much light here. Yeah. Andrew, how about you? What do you, what are you here to share about? Based on what everybody said, the first thing I want to share is Wayne Dyer, based on what you were saying, Lisa, um, and actually everybody. Wayne Dyer mentioned that if you have a puzzle that's all laid out and complete, you take mm -hmm. one piece out, where do your eyes go? Mm -hmm. And that's huge because people don't realize 
um, the veterans, we come back and we're dealing with issues and we think we're a burden and we think we're a problem, we think we're a challenge and the conversations we have are verified with those that share that and so we just kind of turn around, I'm talking we as many of us, we just turn around and disappear. And what happens afterwards is not presented that, oh my God, where'd they go? What happened? So like we all are saying, we care about everyone. Everyone has a place in this purpose, in this, in this global plan. And one piece disappears, we see that immediately. And it affects all of us. Every time there's a suicide, everybody is in shock. And that's what we have to be aware of. We have to change this concept. It's not a solution. I, mean, I, I was fortunate at age three to have an angel visit me and share visions of strength. And as my life progressed and I faced all these challenges, I moved into high school, as with many high school students now, we don't fit in, we don't belong, people don't know us. I had friends, I had really close friends, but nobody knew me and what I was going through, and I didn't know how to communicate that. And I was a runner, so I would go for a run in the middle of the night, I would sneak out of the house, I would go for a run thinking of ways that I could just end it because I didn't fit into this, this whatever it was. And the angels, as crazy as they are, shared humor as a response or viewpoints of others. They knew how to push my buttons and, and shift my focus to stop being so one-sided from my viewpoint and look at it from others and the 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 challenges got stronger you know life happens i actually joined the military at age 34 to take a break um <laughs> i uh went in to play the piano and be in the band because i thought hey why not I'm not doing what my visions are showing me. I need to take a break. I got injured. I had to shift into finance and accounting. More stuff happened. And then after I got out, you know, with 9-11 and all these other things happening, I was facing, which I didn't know for another decade, severe sleep apnea. So for 10 years plus, I'm waking up with death in my mind. I'm trying to tell people, well, are you suicidal? No, I'm not suicidal because that, that ship has sailed. I'm, I want to live. I know my purpose. I know my plan. And that's the key. What is your purpose? What is your plan? Reconnect with that because that's, that's the strength that will keep you going. If you have a purpose, if you have a plan, why would you disappear? And... I, once I recognized that it was sleep apnea, I was able to, to move through it. And, but even still, I had to turn around and face that darkness. As I think it was you, Robert, was saying, you know, I'm a martial artist as well. And I just got to a point where it's like, I've had it. I'm spiritually strong. I've had it with fighting this darkness. I turned around and I said, bring it on, <laughs> and I faced it for two years. And I tried to bring humor in it with my friends because what we don't realize is darkness. The sun goes down. Do we all go, oh my gosh, I've got to <laughs> be depressed in this and that and the other? Or, you know, do we look at the stars and the moon and the beauty of the darkness. And that was something in those, I'm starting to cry, in those dark, dark, dark times, suicide was not an option. So think about that. 
if suicide's not an option and you're facing this deep, deep, deep darkness, I mean, I couldn't even see suicide, let alone any light. But I had divine, I had God, I had angels, and I kept pushing through because I had purpose. I had vision. I stuck with it. Even though I was, I mean, hopeless, helplessness, they kept trying to visit me and pull me down. And I looked at them and said, uh uh, I don't agree. I have this vision, I have this plan, and I am determined to succeed. And now it's happening. I mean, I'm, I shared with you all earlier, this is, this is my vision, to collaborate, to collectively all get together and share how can we help each other globally from celebrities to celebrities to nobody to nobody <laughs> help each other back on their purpose so we can all thrive not survive on this planet thanks i think i've said okay. thank you yeah. so much so we are coming we have about uh, 12 minutes left I would just want to say there's a lot of great comments in the chat room. Mark Green, who is a vet and does help the vets, mm -hmm. he's put a lot of information in there as well, so do check that out. And a lot of people are saying some lovely things and, and validating and loving the things you all are saying. So all of our guests, our hosts, I invite you to go back and see how the people are responding to you. I would like to share, coming off of what Andrew said, and all of you talking about the wonderful things like just ask for help. And and Andrew started to allude to, and all of you have said to some degree or another, remember to ask for your angels and God. Ask them for help too, because they do bring us joy in the, in the most unlikely moments of our lives, of our darkness. And they the joy you just and then look for it you know ask for help and look for the miracle look for the answer and if you start looking for the miracle if you start looking for the light you just shifted your mind from looking for the the way out to the way in and that's to me is where we start to thrive as andrew said when we bring our our spiritual guides in our angels our gods and our our friends our humans our pets life becomes pretty good even in a blink of an eye. Yeah, this is Ron. I'd like to comment to that. It's like uh, what I find is, is when, and I hear when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. We just need to kind of get ready for that. Uh, and I haven't heard it said on here, uh, but I've heard it said in the communities, uh, the, the thing called a successful suicide. Uh, there's not a successful suicide. There's completed suicides. Uh, there's death by suicide, but it is never a success. And 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 it's it's one of those things that uh, suicide. I really don't know that you can recover from. Even the people who are who who are the survivors, uh, the family of someone who takes their life, or the person. There's just no coming back from that. And but one of the things is is that and I saw. A post not long ago it says uh, suicide doesn't end the pain it just transfers it to the people that say I love you and that will be crying at your funeral and so you know really understand uh, that once we start looking at others it gets us out of our deep dark self and and then we live by mission uh, as a veteran um, I've, I'm not someone who's never been in the military I'm not in the military so I'm this something in between, and Andrew says, well, who am I, and what am I, and, and what's my purpose? Well, uh, those who've served in the military, once they get out, they're in this kind of, this, like, between two countries or two, two worlds, even, and, uh, and people need to understand that that identity, uh, there, there's some identity crisis going on there, and that, that we need to really, as veterans, start to establish a new mission. And really, because the missions are pretty clear when you're inside the military, they're not so clear when you get out, and you've got to make them up for yourself. So, so just stay on mission, stay on movement. Beautiful. 
Yeah, and one of the one of the groups that you just brought up are the people that have lost someone to suicide, and that group, and who are grieving. And I, when I spoke, there were just so many people out in the audience, um, you know, for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And what you have to understand is, um, you know, letting or releasing that grief is not letting go of that loved one. It creates room in your heart for the love that you have for them. And you have to use that love to share with others because they didn't do this to necessarily hurt you. They were in tremendous pain. And from this group, that, that's what I learned. And I have this um, phrase, it's called, life ain't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually thought about it, and I've told Swami about this. Um, every day for a year, I tried one-upping something like worse, you know, so Daniel, when you said, you know, the guy couldn't pay his bills, $35. Well, what's worse than that? Having a bill that's $200 or, or uh, having a car accident, losing everything, having your house burned down, uh, losing your job. And I kept doing this until I ran out of ideas. And then I started asking other people their worst horrific things that they had. And when I, I lost everything, I always thought death was the worst thing ever. So I saved that for the end. And the day I woke up with that, the next day I was able to one-up it. It's losing your ability to help someone else. And that can never happen. Uh, so I decided, you know, legacy. And how can I leave something behind? How can I be here and create something that is part of that legacy and leaving that kindness and it's shared in everybody that you touch and so I just want to leave you with one my, my closing thought on this is um, and it's it, it's something I wrote down it's about ripples that all of us as you said when somebody leaves or they they die from suicide they leave this hole because they don't see all the people they've touched with their light and so I want you listening to understand how important you are to others. You may never know the people you've helped or how many people you've touched by just being you. You may never fully know the love you've bestowed in their hearts through your kindness. You may never know how much you mean to them, even if your contribution to their life was a small one. You may never get a chance to hear all the praise they have for you. Just know that you've created a positive ripple and it's endless. And hold that in your heart, because it is, and it comes down to love. And so even if you have no love, know that everybody that's looking at you right here on this panel, we love you. Yeah, and I'd like to also say for those of you out there right now that are struggling, if you're listening to this and you're struggling, I know it may seem like you're forsaken. I know it may seem like you're alone, but I promise you, <laughs> that the divine is carrying you right now, that the divine is, has got you. And that net is there if you choose to see it. And then as Robert just said, if no one's told you today, let me be the first or the last <laughs> to say, I love you. I'm going to say that too. I love you so much. You matter. Brilliant. Can I just add one thing, Swami? Yes. I also want to remind everyone that one part of our life that is hard for people is that change is the only constant. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, when people are in that dark, dark space and they feel like it's going to stay like that forever, change is the only constant. And that, that you will not stay. It will not stay the same. It will shift out. And... My goal is to help people talk about plan and prepare for grief long before it arrives. So if we can do that and understand and accept that change is the only constant and you never know what awaits on the other side of grief. So show up for yourself first. And if someone is grieving or having a hard time, just show up. Beautiful. And I'd like to add something in response to what you said, Lisa. You know, my mission on earth is to help people stop tolerating abuse. And you mentioned an abusive, toxic relationship. And those are the people that I work with all over the globe. And when somebody is behaving in a, in a way that is abusive and toxic to you, know for sure it's not your fault. And you can only move forward when you say, no, you are not going to define my reality. You are not going to define who I am and get help. 
because that person wants to minimize you, discount you, and squish you into a corner and maybe annihilate you. And they would be happy if they had that power over you. Please don't give it to them. Step up and say no and move away. We still have four minutes. Any last comments? Or we can end if it is. We, we covered an amazing amount in this hour. It's so Call amazing. us. Reach out to us. Send an email. <laughs> yeah. Go to our websites. Find us. I'm sure they'll be in the comments there. Reach out. Reach out to each other. It's just not us. Reach out to each other. Be available. Um, just, yeah. Look at the love in the crisis. Yes. Look at the love that's in this group right now, you know, and, and this could be just in a group of friends or a group. I mean, when you start sharing and you open up and you're, you know, transparent and vulnerable and you really allow yourself, you surrender to the process. You have no idea how much support shows up for you and how much love shows up for you. This coming together, this collaboration is so beautiful and so important. So don't go it alone. You cannot go it alone and you don't have to go it alone. And if you're in an abusive relationship, I have a Facebook group. We'll support mm. you. It's called Optimize Life. And reach out. You know, be with people who understand what's going on and will allow you to vent, rant, feel, <laughs> do whatever you need to do, and then give you the benefit of their experience to lift you up again. And, and if you want to overdose on love or hope, I have a Facebook <laughs> page. Uh, it's uh, a guide to the soul. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, if you do read too many of the uh, quotes, I'm not responsible for what you do because you're definitely going to be overdosed on love. So I'm just going to put it on Trust me. <laughs> um, so I'll give you a couple of those. Hope will never leave your side unless you choose to let go of it. So why let go? At times, life may seem like an uphill battle. But when you stop and look back, you'll see that you've scaled a mountain of hope. And love's rope is always there in your hands as long as you choose to hold on to it. Um, you know, you may feel like a stormy mess, but instead of running to hide in a dark shelter, just become part of the dance in those raindrops <laughs> and allow yourself to be the water. <laughs> and also, okay. your tears yeah. will go away in that. So uh, know that, um, you know, I, I find that if you cry in the rain, know that those drops are touching someone else, too. Mm. Right on. Beautiful. I love you, Robert. You're so cute. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love all of you. Actually. I love all of you. <laughs> oh my God. Mommy, Thank you. I, I'm so grateful. And look, you just put yeah. this out there. Look at everybody that came together because we yeah. care. So, much. so many, so many comments here. And thanks to Daniel for really starting yes. this off by, by yes. being so vulnerable with yeah. his Facebook. And Lisa's another one who does very vulnerable live Facebooks. <laughs> and um, so kudos to the, their living examples, their living mentors for us to all be more vulnerable live in real time. So thank you all for being here. Ron, thank you. And, and yeah. the, the website for uh, the, the veterans is what? Uh, it's just the vets coalition org. Okay. And then, uh, you know, thank you for the opportunity to, to, to reach out like this. Uh, my numbers are, are posted everywhere. I was told it was on here. Send me a text if you know somebody needs somebody to reach out and you don't know how to. Call the 800 number uh, for, for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline because you might be calling and say, I don't know how to help somebody. They can give you some real quick clues on how to get involved because you might be the buffer between that person and their eternity. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Yeah. All right, thank you all very much. It's really amazing how much came through. Lots of love. Joy, joy, joy for everybody. Thank you. Bye now. Bye for now. Bye now.